welcome to the brand blitz quiz we are going live right away okay welcome folks to the regional finals of the east zone today of the brand blitz quiz brought to you by storyboard 18 which is network 18's flagship platform for the advertising and marketing community Today, you're watching the East Zone Regional Final, where we have the top six teams from the East Zone with us. And we have two very special guests. Let me introduce you to both of them. First up, we have Tista Sain. Welcome, Tista. Hi. Hey. Lovely to be here on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Hi. Lovely to have you here. Uh, Tista doesn't require much introduction, but I'm going to try a little bit. Uh, one of the interesting things I found about Tista, uh, of course, uh, is she's an advertising legend. But I think she won so many awards in advertising that they finally, I think, Khan in 2019 decided to make you part of the jury so you'll give other people a chance. <gasps> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> other people had a chance even before that, right? <laughs> It's lovely to have you here. Tista was uh, the creative director at Wonderman Thompson. She's now the CEO and co-founder of a wonderful agency called Ladyfinger. We'll have a few discussions about that a little later as well. Uh, Tista, where are you right now? Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Or where, You're joining us from Bombay? Yeah, yeah. I'm in Bombay. It's Sunday, so I'm very much at home. And that's my disgusting curtain at the background. But uh, yeah, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this. And I haven't been part of quizzing since college maybe and it's been um, I mean it, it's it's been so much fun I, I really can't wait so I'm delighted to be here lovely thank you for doing this uh, and hopefully it'll be fun uh, quizzing after a long time since uh, college right yep yes. awesome we have a second panelist uh, Sumanto Chattopadhyay uh, a legend again in the advertising field you've been in advertising for 30 years is what I remember reading you're also the co-founder of the founding team of 82.5 communications which is part of the Ogilvy group uh, one of my favorite fun facts about Sumanto is that he's also uh, popular on YouTube for his channel called the English Nut Sumanto welcome to the brand blitz quiz thank you so much Right. Uh, can you tell us, uh, for those who don't know, uh, the few people who don't know what the English Nut is about? Yeah, so the English Nut is, uh, you can, first of all, you can, it's my uh, social media avatar. You can find it on YouTube, as I said, as well as on Instagram, Facebook and X. And it's basically my quirky take on the English language. So every uh, Sunday morning, I drop a new video. Uh, I, there was a new one uh, today, for example, and the topic of that was Latin phrases which are used in English, such as in vino veritas, which means in wine there is truth. So basically, if you want to get somebody to tell the truth, get them drunk. So that so that's just one of the things that I've covered. I've interviewed Shashi Tharoor, Ruskin Bond and others also for it. Uh, and yeah, it this is what sort of keeps me uh, interested and motivated uh, and not bored with life. So it, it's a fun thing. So do do catch it. Yes. For those of you who haven't followed this page, do check it out. It's called The English Nut. Uh, a fun fact is that Sumanto also hosted a quiz on the channel, quizzing Shashi Tarur on very interesting etymology and word origin stories. Do check that out as well. Yeah. I, I was uh, telling Sai that I'm... Uh, I've never participated in a quiz because I'm really nervous when I'm asked questions. I'll, I'll forget my name as well if you suddenly ask me, uh, you know, live on a quiz show. I'm much more comfortable asking questions, which is why I enjoyed doing that interview of Shashi Tharoor. Why do you think I'm doing this? It's more comfortable to ask <laughs> questions and become the quiz master than actually participate in quizzes and lose to people. <laughs> right. uh, Right. So speaking yeah. of quizzing and, uh, you know, quizzers, we have the six teams who qualified for the East Zone final. So we had a national prelims earlier this last month where we had 700 people participating from all over India, from all across different cities, small towns, big towns, metros, all of that. And these are the top six teams from the East Zone. Please welcome the first team. That's a very interesting team name called Cry at Me. Welcome, folks. Just introduce yourselves and tell us why you are crying. <laughs> Hello, my name is Aditya. I'm from Faridabad and I'm a first term student at XLRI Jamshedpur. Here is my teammate. Yeah, so I am Soham. I'm also a first year student at XLRI Jamshedpur and I belong from Jamshedpur. And we chose the team name because we registered for the quiz on the day of our accounts exam and it did, did not go well. <laughs> okay. Um, 
clearly marketing professionals here, not finance professionals anyway. Uh, but that's the first college team from today, uh, for today from XLRI Jamshedpur. Uh, hope we have some XLRI fans watching the YouTube live stream. Next up, we have team two, which is called Inquisitive. Welcome, folks. Hello, everyone. I am Chandrachud Pati. Hello, I am Dibyam Debashi Sahu. And we are final students from NIT Raukala. And Inquisitive is our also club name from the, the Quizzing Society of NIT Raukala. So we choose to that. Lovely. Another college team from NIT Raukala. So we have uh, Jharkhand, then followed by Odisha. Let's go to team three. Yes. Hi, I'm Ruptim. Uh, I'm a freelancer from Kolkata. And hi, I'm Rob. I am working with Capgemini as a project manager. And we call ourselves no brainer because nobody takes us seriously. We don't have any chances apart from that. <laughs> <It's very meaning laughs> we think that is happening. Okay, so that's how we lovely. Self-deprecating humor always works on social media. So one, well done. Um, awesome. So next up we have sorry, uh, I think just calling team four on stage. Quizzer Sons Buzzers. Yes. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Shubham Lahuti. I am the co-founder of a general knowledge startup. And uh, hi, this is Sagar Agrawal. Uh, I am an associate content writer at Quizora, and we both are from Siliguri. And we chose our uh, team name because, let's say, irony. Uh, we did not know the format was an entire buzzer round, so this is very ironic. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, and what I love about this team is, of course, they're from one of my favorite cities, Siliguri, but they're also a quizzing company, right? So Quizora, uh, based out of Siliguri, but organizing quizzes all across uh, that part of India. So please do check them out. That's team four. Next up, we have team five, which is another college team. Hey, folks. Hello. So I'm Amrit. I'm a first year student at I am Calcutta, and I'm from Varanasi. And here's my teammate Piyush. Hi, I'm Piyush. I am also from I am Calcutta. I'm studying in my first year, and I'm from Kolkata itself. And we call ourselves Reservoir Underdogs because we are fans of Quentin Tarantino, and we don't rate ourselves too highly. Lovely. I love the name. <laughs> and the last team we have is from Chhattisgarh. Hey, folks. We cannot hear you. You're on mute, or your mic is not connected. Okay, they seem to be having some issues. No, we have got them back. Yes, everybody is on mute. It looks like ah. everybody is on mute. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now they're on six. mute. We still can't hear you, folks. Oops. No worries. All right, while we're waiting for team five to join in, team six rather to join in, we'll just go through. Cadbury Dairy Milk presents storyboarding team Grand Brits Quiz. Cadbury Dairy Milk presents storyboarding team. All right, so this is the East Zone Finals. Team six, can you try once again? Are we in? Yes. Or we'll come back? No, no, we can Sorry. hear you now. Okay, fine. Hello, everyone. I'm Ayman Ali. I work as manager at Bilai Steel Plant Sale. Hello everyone, my name is Himanshu Verma and uh, we are both, uh, I mean, we're working in the same company, Sail Bilai, and our team name is corresponds to that only. Uh, there is an interesting reason, we actually registered at the last moment and we thought that it will happen, let's go quickly, let's register our name quickly. So that's why we were just uh, quickly registered Sail Bilai. Okay. Uh, that, that memory. Lovely. Yeah, Sail Bilai is a Okay, so we have a team from Bilai as well. Here's what we have in store. So this is uh, the third regional final that we're having today. Uh, after this, we'll have the West Zone finals next week. And after that, we'll have the national finale. The next week's quiz, we'll have Roshan Abbas joining us. And then Piyush Pandey himself will join us for the national finals. What are these teams fighting for, right? So what's at stake is that the top two teams from today will qualify for the National Brand Blitz finale on the September 24th. The winning team from today will get 20,000 rupees vouchers from Agio, our style partner. A big, big shout out to also to our title partner, Cadbury's Dairy Milk. And of course, the team from Storyboard18 for putting this together. 
we have very simple two rounds for today's quiz. One is what we call as brand prism, where you'll get to choose different topics of difficult, varying difficulty levels, and followed by the final round, which is four clue ka one, where multiple clues will be connected by one single answer, right? So you're going to have four, five topics appearing on your screen with four levels of difficulty. So you get 400, 300, 200, and 100 points, depending on the level that you choose. All the questions will be on buzzer. The team that answers the question correctly chooses the next question that's open to all. And then finally, we have my favorite round called Four Kluka One, where we'll have four questions. Each of them will have four clues, and you need to tell me the overall connection. Right. Before that, uh, once again, we'll have certain questions where fun facts will be provided by the panelists and certain questions that the players can also buzz in and share fun facts. You'll get plus 10 for every fun fact that you share. OK, before we start, I'm going to share with the, start with a fun fact. So as most of you know, the, one of the largest companies in the world, in fact, the biggest company for the longest time was the East India Company, which ruled over India over 100 years. The East India Company company actually dissolved uh, 17 years after the Sepoy mutiny. Uh, and after that, in 2010, a famous Indian called Sanjeev Mehta, who's a graduate from IIM Ahmedabad, actually purchased the brand East India Company and has now taken over the brand, uh, which is interesting given this particular ad. Check it out. Right. So this is a Rajni Gandha ad from 2005, which predicted that, you know, one Indian will eventually own East India company. So you, as you can see, advertising is very important. It also predicts the future apart from just selling uh, products. Right. Awesome. With that, we're at, uh, we shall start with the first question. Here we go. Just give me a second. All right, to start things off, I'm going to request Tista to choose any question, uh, any topic or difficulty level that will open it up for the rest of the teams. And from there, we'll take it up with the teams themselves. You can choose any topic that you like. And you can either give them an easy one for 100 points or give them 400. So I'm going to go with Bandit Queens. Lovely. And I'm going to go with 300. Lovely. So we're going to start with Branded Queens for 300. Coming up on your screen. Now. Okay. The Geretti Awards is one of the most prestigious advertising awards that celebrates advertising excellence. Team three has pressed the buzzer even before I finish the question. Team three, you can't <laughs> read the question after pressing the buzzer. You need to give me an answer right now. Yeah, so she coined the term when she was working for a NWIR, Diamond is Forever. So you can see, okay, the Gritty Award okay, has a diamond holding on it. Okay, so she coined the term. Uh, so Diamond is Forever for two years. Got it. So the Gerity Award celebrates advertising excellence from a female pers woman's perspective, named after Mary Frances Gerity, the world famous copywriter. The question was, how is the Gerity Award statuette an homage to Mary Gerity? And you're saying that she coined the tagline, a diamond is forever, and that award shows a diamond yeah. on a fire. Is absolutely correct, right? So you get 300 points for that. You start with a bang. Mary Frances Gerity wrote one of what is considered the most famous tagline of the 20th century, a diamond is forever. And which is why the Garetti Award is shaped in that way. It shows a diamond burning on a fire. Uh, right. And that is the one of the first ads that she wrote, a diamond is forever. Sumanto, Tista, any interesting fun facts? Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, the Garetti Awards, uh, yes. uh, unlike any other international award for advertising, and you guys probably know it now, you all are like, Master Quizzes is really the only award show where the jury members are only women, and uh, because uh, it uh, because uh, you know the person who started Joe Brooks, he's the guy who began this whole thing, and I've been on the inauguration of uh, the Gretti Awards in India, and the thinking has really been that uh, women jurors, as opposed to even a mixed jury or even a jury, you know, a jury room with only guys, 
view work differently and there's a different lens and that's uh, and a lot of which uh, uh, i mean i know you guys are so young and you will like discover as you move forward in your career in yes. marketing or advertising and it's really about a woman's uh, view being different so it's the same uh, work that's awarded or entered in award shows across the world but um, uh, it's it, it's it's remarkable that gretty with the top talent of women in the world always happen to choose something uh you know which necessarily doesn't win it can because it's really uh you know communication uh, view through a woman's lens and i think this is their fourth or fifth year and uh, you're absolutely right it is based on you know diamond is forever and the whole origin of karate awards yeah so that's the fun fact lovely 300 points to tisa as well who's not participating in the quiz but for that fun fact uh, she's the one who actually suggested this great question uh, and this was one of my favorite questions as well moving uh quickly to the prism uh team 3 you get to choose now east east indian copper is 200 so you are choosing east india companies for 200 Okay. Here we go. Which Kolkata brand are we talking about here? The logo is inspired by the founder's visit to the Alipur Zoo. Team four quizzer sons buzzers have pressed the buzzer just two seconds before no brainer has gone for it. Team four. Slazenger. Sorry. Slazenger, the sports brand. Slavenger. No, that's minus hundred to team four. The next up is team three, followed by team six. Who's pressed the buzzer? Go ahead, team three. Ah, uh, this is Shobhu Shachi. Shobhu Shachi Mukherjee. Mukherjee, okay. The fashion designer. Fashion designer is absolutely right. So Sabhi Shachi Mukherjee's logo is that of a Royal Bengal tiger because he remembers seeing a tiger in the Alipur Zoo, and he chose the red color because that's the color that most Indian brides use on their wedding day. So fantastic quizzing from Team Three. Uh, Tista, uh, Sumanto, <laughs> any fun facts about Sabhi Sachi Mukherjee? Well, Tista says that he made made up the story afterwards. <laughs> God, Sumanto, just share your own story. <laughs> no, no, it's perfectly fine. Let the get the roll on social media. Out of the bag. <laughs> But uh, yeah. I think we were discussing one interesting fact about that. You know, he actually appears as himself on the latest season yeah, of Made in Heaven. Uh, there's a lot of interesting product placement in Made in Heaven with Sabhi Sachi brand. Uh, did you guys watch it? Yeah, I just finished watching it. So. Many vigorous nods from the teams. Yeah, <laughs> okay. and he's a pretty uh, good actor. Yeah. Sorry, I said he's. He's a pretty good actor. He's pretty natural. So Sabhi Sachi Mukherjee is a good fashion designer and a good actor, and he's also a quiz master, right? So he hosted a uh, Bon Vita quiz contest long ago in Kolkata with uh, Derek himself. So I, I once interviewed him for an event that we had at Ogilvy. So oh, lovely. Yeah, where he was he was supposed to be a speaker, and he said, you know, I'm not good at like giving a speech, so it'd be easier if you ask me questions and I'll answer them. So. At the last minute, I became a quiz master. <laughs> Lovely. That's the second time Sumanto has become a quiz master. One was yes. Shashi Tharoor, the other was a Sabhi Sachi Mukherjee. Yeah. Okay. Let's get back to this quiz, right? Um, question was answered by Team Three, so you guys get to pick the topic. East India Company is three hundred. Okay, playing to their strength. Which East Pakistan brand are we talking about? That was founded by a former Pakistan Army major, a uh, general officer, and has inspired ITC and Britannia. Team three, no brand has gone for it. Just above team four, team two, and team six. Pran, pran, pran. From Bangladesh. From Bangladesh. What do they do? Biscuits, 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 snacks, and other snacks things. And okay, so they come. Drinks and stuff. They came up with the wafer biscuits. 
the potato etc which becomes famous in pop is absolutely right amjad khan choudhry founded the brand called pran which stands for program for rural advancement nationally and their most famous brand is potata which are these thin potato wafers which inspired itc and britannia to make their own versions of it but potata itself is a popular brand on its own and it's originally from bangladesh uh tisa and sumanto have you guys tried this product i have actually tried it because at one time uh, the company approached us uh, with the possibility of us uh, at creating advertising for them that never ended up happening but i did try uh, potatas at that time and they're quite nice they're quite nice they're very nice yes Uh, we have a bunch of people who's watch who are watching the live stream on YouTube. Uh, a bunch of them have gotten this answer right. Anirudha Datta said, "Pran, uh, Faridur Rahman Chaudhary, Enchanted." Pri you have cry me at cry at me. By the way, um, has a bunch of fans. I don't know if you guys have like a fan club who's you know watching you on live stream right now. A bunch of people rooting for cry at me. But right now it is team three who's leading with a huge score of eight hundred. Team four is at minus hundred, but the, it's early days in the quiz, folks. Uh, yeah. Okay, back to the prism. East four hundred. East for four hundred. Okay, here we go. On your screen, buzzers are reset. Here we go. Which brand was named after this Hyderabad monument's nickname? Team three, no brainer, has gone for it. Quickly, folks. Charmina cigarette. Minus two hundred is what team Hello. three will get. Team two. Sorry. Yeah, unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Uh, oh. Team three, please don't mute. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, we were also looking at Charmina, but uh, we'll now go with uh, biryani. Beru biryani will get you minus 200 team 6 sale bilai <laughs> has also we also went for charminar we have no answer right now we have no answer so that's minus 200 let me complete the question which brand was named after this hyderabad monument's nickname coined by local teenagers the clue is this is the only denim like package of its kind i'm going to give 10 seconds more for the rest of the teams to press the buzzer so everybody on the youtube chat including prateek pant anandita they all said charminar which is what all the three teams went for that is the reason why this question was framed because most of you would think charminar but this is a 400 value question last 5 seconds for the rest of the teams teams 1 5 and 4 I'll give you a hint. You can work it out based on the other guesses that people took. Anyone taking my bait? There's nothing to lose. It's minus two hundred. <laughs> It's only like live on uh, YouTube, right? It's okay. We go closing this question. Tista, do you want to tell us the answer to this one? Yeah, the answer is, uh, and maybe should hear it because it says nickname. It's. Uh, Charms. It's a, it is another tobacco brand from ITC, and it's uh, got this. This is the brand. Um, it's got denim packaging, uh, really yeah. ahead of its time. Very cool and classy. And uh, Charmina and Gold Flake and yeah, all the association. But it's a 400 pop uh, answer. So yeah, it was tricky. But this is really the brand, and I'm sure you'll remember it. And you, know, you guys are from the east, so yeah, this is the brand. Charms is the secret brand. Uh, I like how Tisa said you'll never forget this brand now, right? Like you may <laughs> have not heard of it before, but yes, you're absolutely right. Tisa actually shared this very interesting funda of how uh, Charm cigarette was also created by the same manufacturers of Charminar cigarettes, and Charms was the nickname that a lot of Hyderabad teenagers gave to the Charminar, and it's probably the only packaging, cigarette packaging in the world that has denim, right? Because denim was what was considered cool during the 70s and 80s. Um, Sumanto or Tisa, have you guys worked on tobacco brands? Uh, any marketing that you've done on the packaging? Yeah, I've worked on Gold Flake quite a bit. Yeah, so that and that's in fun fact is that actually people uh, I've heard before that people said that Fair and Lovely was the the largest uh, FMCG brand in India and things like that. But I think it's uh, uh, it's Gold Flake. 
Goldflex cigarettes are actually also an FMCG brand, and that's the largest one in India. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, wow. Please go. Right. No, no. I asked Monto whether that was a that's a quiz question because uh, the largest FMCG brand being Goldflex is is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I so think what's also a... interesting. Is, please. Yeah. Please go ahead. No, no. I was just saying, yes, giving millions of Indians lung cancer for years. <laughs> what? <laughs> what I find interesting about charms is that uh, you, you can't really do much of marketing in the uh, field of cigarettes, but except on the pack, right? And I think most people sort of just play around with Coto Farms or Insignias, but charms really sort of revolutionized the way cigarette packs uh, look like. All right, let's move on. Um, so no one got that one right. Uh, I think the last team to an or take a guess was Team Six, Sale Bilai. So Sale Bilai, can you take your choice now? We'll go for logo. क्या कहेंगे? Two hundred. Logo क्या कहेंगे for two hundred on your screen now. these are all the other mascots in which brands universe or which is the most famous one that's missing team 2 inquisitive has pressed the buzzer immediately this is duo from duolingo what is duo from duolingo at uh, the green colored uh, bird from duolingo the what bird? mascot what bird uh, is duo. it what bird is it is it a parrot i don't know It's an owl, right? But we'll give it to you. Absolutely right. This is the Duolingo's owl mascot called Duo, right? Which is the one that's most famously missing. Uh, what I like interesting about this is that there is also an Indian character called Vikram who has a turban and a beard. I think that's like the you know American version of what an Indian would look like. Even in the Spider-Man movie, there's an Indian character who's just like got a turban and a beard. I think I had a, a, a troll trolling sort of a comment on this. Uh, Sumanta, who do you think will win between Duolingo and English Nut? <laughs> I, well, I, I mean, I, I think that it's uh, English Nut is like a superior product, but uh, yeah, Duolingo has a lot of marketing might behind it. So you know, I don't have those budgets. So yeah, all these investors are just uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, fun facts from the teams. Any fun facts about Duolingo? or dolingo's mascot team 3 no brainer has pressed the buzzer and now they are wondering what to say i think their internal team meetings or something is called parliament because the owl of, of owl because their logo is owl okay so right parliament okay we going to do a fact check on that if it is correct yeah, yeah. that's a brilliant answer yeah. going to 10 it is yeah? it is it is it is all oh, lovely so 10 points yeah. to team 3 uh, fantastic fun fact from you team 6 you also press the buzzer Uh, actually, Anand Mahindra's in-laws are uh, uh, belong to Spanish or something like that. So Anand Mahindra has recently advertised for Duolingo, and he tweeted. he tweeted that I use Duolingo to uh, just uh, chat freely with my in-laws. In-laws, oh lovely! That's a fun fact that deserves ten points for sure. And one last fun fact from Inquisitive. Yes. So the most studied language on Duolingo in Sweden is Swedish itself. Because of the large number of uh, refugees that they are taking. Oh wow, that's an amazing fun fact. Ten points to Inquisitive who opened their account. Let's move quickly back to the next topic. So I think Team Two, you had the control of the board. So just giving you one second. Yes, Team Two, pick a topic. So we'll go viral influenza two hundred. Viral influenza for two hundred on your screen now. In twenty fifteen, Whisper Sanitary Pads launched which award winning campaign to break taboos around periods? It says, "Don't worship, don't enter the kitchen, and many such taboos." What have I blanked out? That is the name of this iconic award winning campaign. Team five, Reservoir Underdogs have gone for it. Uh, basically, don't eat pickle or don't touch pickle. Why? Uh, because during me menstruation periods, like in women in India, are not allowed to have pickle because it's spicy and it affects the body's humors, etc. Is absolutely right. You get points for this one. This is touch the pickle, uh, which was a whisper campaign that won, I think, even the Golden Lion at Cannes. Uh, Tista, uh, 
you remember this campaign any thoughts views about the insight behind this campaign so uh, well done reservoir dogs uh, but touch the pickle isn't because it's spicy it's because uh, menstruation has so many you know myths around it it's because if you touch the pickle the pickle will become bad so it's all about it's the onus is on the woman it is not about you not allowed to eat the spicy food and um, various such things that you know we were celebrated and uh, touch the pickle um, i was uh, on the it was a first can award for glass you know what the glass award is for it's for any brave ideas Please around the world to celebrate uh, you know gender equality and really uh, you know empower women and this won the grand prix it was india's uh, it was the inaugural glass category and it was an india won the grand prix i was on the jury and uh, there were all these uh, obviously i was the only indian on the jury and uh, there was another uh, you know hotly contested idea a global idea uh, which was very popular around the world at that time and uh, there was really but people were intrigued by what it meant and i had to uh, make a long speech about because people could not fathom what touch the pickle meant and yes. that you know india had these taboos and it was it was fun it was also a case video whenever you get the time look at it it's brilliant work done by bbdo josie raj and team and uh, really you know turn the conversation on. and actually i would think the first time you know uh, periods were put on the table now you guys are talking yeah. about it really so yeah that's the fun fact with it it's a great campaign great idea great campaign please do watch it and uh, well done guys for getting it right lovely i assume the glass category is named after the glass ceiling is that the reason yeah yeah yeah, yeah. let's take a short uh, look at the video or the ad that talking about <laughs> अरे हाँ बाबा शिताश द पिकल पीरियड्स के दिनों में कहते हैं डोंट वेयर व्हाइट डोंट गो आउट डोंट प्ले डोंट टच द पिकल आई से गर्ल्स लेट्स ब्रेक द टैबूज गो अहेड एंड टच द पिकल क्विज पर कदम बढ़ाए जा All right, and uh, we had a bunch of people who got this right, even on YouTube. Pratik Pant, Nader Ahmed, and Anna Fathmi. Uh, one of the people who's watching the quiz, Sajid Hussain, says, "All the best, Babu." I don't know which Babu it's referring to because you could use that for everyone here. But okay, let's move back. Uh, we had the fun facts. Let's move to okay. Cool. Team five, pick a topic. लोगो क्या कहेंगे फॉर हंड्रेड प्लेइंग इट सेफ बजर्स आर रीसेट हियर्स द क्वेश्चन ऑन योर स्क्रीन नाउ लाइक द एम डी एच अंकल सीन ऑन द पैकेजिंग विच कोलकाता बेस्ड ब्रांड हैज द इमेज ऑफ द फाउंडर ऑन इट टीम फोर टीम फाइव टीम थ्री हैव ऑल प्रेस द बजर्स All separated only by like hundred milliseconds. Team four, your first. Uh, this is mukrochak. What is mukrochak? Explain it to me like I'm a five year old South Indian. Uh, like uh, it's a jhalmudi, jhalmudi brand. Like they make confectionery. That's items. all I want to know, <laughs> right? As long as it's jhalmudi, it's fine, right? So this is mukrochak. Uh, can you tell me what mukrochak means in Bengali? Uh, like Take a guess. Expo- ex- explosion in the mouth, something like that. बॉम्बेटेडी Any sweet Bengal oh, outlet carries the uh, oh. has this brand in it. Okay, that's a tip from pro tip from Tisa that anyone who wants it in Bombay go check out Sweet Bengal. Anandita Roy on YouTube says, okay, it also means exciting in the mouth, also like tasty in the mouth and exciting at least. Yeah. Um, Anirudh Tata says it's the chana chow that's famous. Okay, yeah. fun facts from the teams. Open for five seconds. Team three, no brainer has gone for it. So they started uh, with a small shop. The founder in Taligarh Metro Station. Okay, and uh, they still uh, keep them proud, and they float that. Okay, that we had that humble roots and things like that. So it basically started from a small shop in Chak Taligarh Metro Station. 
or probably they used to distribute between the locals near the tolio got it lovely so 10 points to you for that one fun fact team 1 team 4 and team 2 all of you are still yet to open uh, team 6 you've had some bad luck team 3 sorry team 4 has also pressed the buzzer for a fun fact please do tell us yeah so uh, geoma geomart has uh, recently is has been campaigning in and around north bengal that they have mukrochak so this just shows how big the brand is like they have holding all across the roads saying that we are all selling mukrochak in our stores now lovely so team 4 got the answer right and gave us some fun facts so you guys have now the control of the board pick a topic uh we'll go for east india companies 100 east india companies shai our bazar is locked shai our bazar is locked okay your bazar is locked we'll just test out once again team 3 can press the bazar now it's okay okay just press the bazar once yeah it's working perfect so we are going for east india companies for 100 right team 4 Here's the question on your screen. Another brilliant ad. Take a look and tell me the brand. This is Tata's truly inclusive and secular Swadeshi ad from the 1950s. Team three, no brainers. Immediately press the buzzer. Tell me the brand. This is Hamam. Hamam soap, owned yeah. by the Tatas. Yeah. Is it a Unilever brand? No. Later on, they sold it. is absolutely right this is hamam soap that was owned by tata oil mills in the 1950s they sold it to unilever many decades later that's absolutely right tisa uh, sumanto any uh, interesting anecdotes or fun facts about hamam soap so i i i just know this story from my parents with many 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 uh, decades ago they when they first went to uk they actually went by ship and there was this uh, family uh, from east bengal and they were carrying like a tr- a crate of these soaps because they said that uh, in uh, in the west they use animal fat uh, they were muslims they said they use pork fat in the soaps over there so they were carrying like their lifetime supply of hamam soap so that soap oh lovely it was for them and i think uh, what's interesting is that uh today hamam is uh you know mother to daughter and teaching women to be um you know uh, independent and and strong in terms of like self defense so it's really really interesting to see the whole you know brand trajectory from you know a swadeshi brand to in a sense still yeah, yeah kind of swadeshi but the the new narrative that it's talking to uh with hul so and it's some really really good great advertising by ogilvy lovely Okay, fun facts from the teams on hamam soap. Team three, no brainer has gone for it again. So hamam is basically the Turkish bath. So that, that's how it is named hamam. Right. It's absolutely the right. ten points to you. Uh, in fact, I was shocked when you travel around Europe, you see hamam everywhere. This is name of the sort of uh, you know uh, spa or the bath, right? That's there. Uh, but in India, it's of course famous as a brand name. Quick, quickly. Uh, I think team three, you have control of the board. Uh, yes. Uh, logo, logo, three hundred. Ah, logo. Ah, what? 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 character rights fees by casting indian actors instead of using the original characters footage so this is how a particular brand in india was able to sidestep legalities team 3 has pressed the buzzer rajesh puri satish yeah guess cherry blossom charlie chaplin in the role of charlie chaplin that and is actual charlie chaplin that is the actual this guy is the actual charlie chaplin mm-hmm. yeah and yeah. okay 
is absolutely right. This is how Cherry Blossom for many decades was able to use the image of Charlie Chaplin and create these wonderful ad campaigns way back from the 1980s because they actually, in fact, the Charlie Chaplin Foundation wrote to them and they said that, hey, we're not using any of the original footage. We're not actually using the original Charlie Chaplin. We're just having an Indian actor play this role with a guy with a bowler hat. Any fun facts, Tista, about Charlie Chaplin and bowler hats? Yeah, so... Um... Uh, I, I worked on one of the uh, productions for this particular one of the series and uh, there were, it was very difficult to get a bowler hat in uh, Bombay at that time and we had to get a bowler hat made and I remember there was one tailor at, uh, at Fountain in the Elphinstone building. He was, uh, you know, somebody who used to make like uh, the suits and trousers for the for the British. He was an old man, but he had this, I've never seen a hat being made and I don't know how many people have, but he was the only one who had that stuff where you create a mold and you get a perfect bowler hat. And because we were getting late for the shoot and I didn't know what to do, I packed him into the cab along with his machinery and took him to the studio. And uh, because we needed to have like a supply of bowler hats because there was, I think, one shot where he had to throw his hat away and that meant he couldn't use it again. So yeah, that's a fun fact about uh, Cherry Blossom and Charlie Chaplin. Lovely. No one ever talks about all these production issues behind the scenes and how ads are made uh, with props and uh, costumes. Uh, I have an interesting video that I wanted to show all of you um, and see if you can notice anything interesting that happens towards the end. Okay, I'll give 10 points to anyone who can press the buzzer and tell me what happens towards the end that is interesting or unusual. Team 5, Reservoir Dogs has gone for it. Uh, basically, color is introduced, so the color ad the first time. Why? So, like, color TV was coming in, maybe this is an ad they used during that time to show color. I'll give you points. 10 points to you. So, uh, Tisa and Sumanto, I found this very interesting that uh, when Cherry Blossom was advertising, most of the TV channels said you can't show a black and white ad because people will think there's something wrong with my TV channel. So which is why in the last 10 seconds they had to make it color so people wouldn't think that it's actually something wrong with the television sets or the transmission. It's just an ad that is in black and white. All right, wow. 10 points to Team 5 for a wonderful fun fact. Okay. Uh, team 5, you have control of the board. Sorry. No, Team 5 answered the fun fact. So yeah, Team 5, choose a topic. Uh, we'll take viral influenza 300. Viral influenza for 300. One of my favorite questions. Here we go. The story of Blix and Blee is a 1925 book. Team 3, no brainer, has gone for it. Quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're not even waiting for this. Bigs be be put up. Okay. Basically, okay. Uh, it used to the, uh, give the concept that whenever children gets coughs and cold, okay, this uh, uh, yeah, bigs and will come and heal them. Okay, through the bigs be put up and things like that. So. Okay, so this is turning out to be a single horse race uh, where the rest of the teams are just figuring out who will come second. But he's absolutely right. Rabi Sankar Saha is absolutely right. This is a very interesting marketing strategy by Vic way back uh, close to 100 years ago uh, where they had a series of comic books released called Blix and Blee. Uh, thoughts, Sumanto and Tista, on brands doing some interesting work in comic books or comic strips rather. So, I mean... I just, I mean, in my career, I got a chance to do uh, campaigns for Indian Express because they used to have a page which had a full page of cartoons at one point in time, a long time ago. Yes. And that was a, a big USP because the other papers didn't have like a full. So they uh, they told me to do the campaign and they I, I wanted to use the, the cartoon characters and they allowed me to do that. But normally what happens is that there are always copyrights involved and you can't do yes. that. And being a newspaper, they said, we'll, we'll, uh, if there's a problem, we'll handle it. So I had a, a, a real blast creating campaigns using all the, you know, international uh, cartoon characters. Lovely. Tisa, did you have any chance to work on comic strips, ca cartoons? Any chance? 
No, I, I, oh God, I was thinking about a fun fact about uh, Vix actually. Yes. And uh, there's a uh, uh, there's a there's a really nice anecdote about uh, you know the CEO of Procter and Gamble, and you know you know Vix vapor up, you know those inhalers. So apparently, oh. uh, again, verify it, but this is uh, this is like part of like marketing folklore. So apparently. Um, the CEO was doing a home visit and he was somewhere in uh, in Punjab and he was going from home to home and they were just talking to, you know, mothers with children about wigs. And uh, there's a uh, there was a particular housewife who said, you know, that the dabba, it's very difficult to extract it at one time. It would be nice if they could just even holding it and you can inhale it. And that, and you know, that's what, I mean, well, communication, good advertising is all about. So that led to, you know, the inhaler and the fact that it's now, and something which is also now, you know, on a keychain because people swear by it so much. I swear by it as well. So yeah, I I mean that's the the vapor up fun fact about how Vix finally and where it's evolved over the years. You you're on mute, sorry. Sorry. That's a lovely fun fact, Tisa. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sumanta, for Shad. Well, one person on YouTube, Aniruddha Datta, has shared an interesting fun fact. He said that Ishita Arun, Piyush Pandey's niece and uh, Ila Arun's daughter, started her career with a Wix ad, which is very interesting. Um, I think she was also part of this TV show called Scoop. Uh, she plays the wife of the editor of the magazine as well. Right? Yeah. Uh, great fun facts there. Uh, any fun facts on Wix from the teams? Okay, team six. Finally, a new team. Yes, sale bilai. Uh, there was actually a print ad uh, featuring uh, Mr. Modi and uh, Beer Grills uh, of uh, Vicks ki goli lo khich khich dur kar. There was uh, there was uh, what? Yeah, yeah. You can yeah, check yeah, it yeah. out. Uh, they were both sitting together after Beer Grills episode. <laughs> it was cartoon based that featuring Mr. Modi and uh, Beer Grills, and there was a uh, the bug of the Vicks, and uh, uh, the title was uh, Vicks ki goli lo khich khich dur karo. Just when Beer Girls came to India. Just when Beer Girls came, came, came to, to India. India and had an episode with Modi ji after the national party. Ten points to you just for saying Modi ji. That's perfectly. Uh, it's always going to be correct, right? Okay, back to the prism. Uh, team three, you guys have the board. Logo four hundred. Logo four hundred. Logo, kya kahenge for four hundred? The team that's leading by how much? How much are they leading by? They are currently leading by almost thousand. 100 points and they are going for 400 points. So that's really confident, aggressive quizzing, which is the kind of quizzing I like. Okay. You have to tell me a story in this case. Read the question carefully, everyone, and tell me what the story is. Pringles announced that their mascot is named Julius Pringles, but it turned out that the team at Pringles believed a hoax that was run by students on which particular platform? So, today, officially, Kellogg's or the company that owns Pringles has officially said the mascot has a name which is Julius Pringles. But it turned out that the company actually fell for a hoax that they read on a particular website. Which website? Where a bunch of students edited this piece of information uh, which the marketing team at Pringles believed. Which website? That's the way. Team six, sale bilai. I'm guessing oh, 400 uh, points. They edited on the Wikipedia page, so maybe just on the Wikipedia platform they edited it, so maybe they took it from there. Come head. on, you think brand managers is going to read like Wikipedia article and believe that? And we are already it? negative, so just give it a try. <laughs> 400 points. That's absolutely right. <laughs> Wonderful answer from Team Six. Well done, guys. Finally. And they suddenly disappeared after that <laughs> joyous moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is absolutely right. The marketing team at Kellogg's actually announced officially that the mascot is named Julius Pringles because they saw an edit on the Wikipedia page. And then once they announced it, the students who actually were responsible for this came out and said that, hey, we are the guys who actually did this as a joke. We just, you know, somebody asked me one day, what do you think the Pringles guys named? That guy said Julius. So they went on Wikipedia and updated it. And the marketing team at Kellogg's actually believed this and announced it publicly and then later were shamed for this. Okay, let's go to some fun facts from the teams. Team 3, Team 6, and Team 5, I press the buzzer. Go for it. Team 3. 
So basically, the writer Jane Wolfe is exactly look like the mascot of uh, Pringles, and he was associated with the uh, uh, creation of uh, Pringles also. So you can check. Okay, so it is believed that the Ping, uh, the mascot is inspired from him. Which writer? Are you, can you repeat the name once again? Jane Wolfe, G E N E W O L F E, Jane Wolfe. Got it. Thank you. Ten points to you for that one. Team six, sale bilay. Uh, basically, the shape of the Pringles is on a strict hyperbolic equation. That, that they're very particular about that. that there's a particular equation about uh, a hyperbolic equation. So every Pringle is basically aligned to the shape as per the equation. So that's the ten fact points to you for that fun fact. That is absolutely right. And last one from Reservoir Underdogs. Yeah. So basically, there, there have been a lot of internet theories about what the Pringles logo or the man actually looks like. But the company then said that you know, whatever you can see on the can, that is the enough. That is the, the only part of the logo that matters. There is no lower body to the man. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Ten points to you for that one. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry, we have one more team that's pressed the buzzer. Team four. Yes. Quizzer sans buzzers. After this, uh, we're going to take a pause. Yeah. The founder of Pringles was actually buried. His ashes were buried in a uh, Pringles, Pringles box. Yes. Yeah. That is also right. That's also a very popular trivia and a story. Ten points to you for that. Some wonderful answers and fun facts from all the teams so far. We're going to take a look at the scores. We are doing very well on time. Um, Kashyap, if you're ready with the scores. Kashyap, are you ready? Okay, cool. Let's go back um, right now to the board. Team six, you had control of the board. We'll go for ads. अच्छे हैं two hundred. Ads अच्छे हैं for two hundred. On your screen, here we go. This is an ad for which entity? It says how to eat Alfonso. Cry at me has gone for a team one. Good to see you. I think it's an ad for Maza. It's an ad for Maza. That's a very logical good guess. It says how to eat Alfonso. Ratnagiri is mentioned there, but you will get a minus hundred. This is not Maza. Team five reservoir underdogs have gone for it. It says uh, Ratnagiri there. Yeah. Yeah, my guess was going to be Ratnagiri mangoes, the GI product. Okay, the GI product Ratnagiri mangoes will get you minus hundred. Team four, quizzers, sans, buzzers from Siliguri. Um, we are going for slice. Slice, Maza, all similar brands. This is a completely different category. In fact, that's why I said entity. Take a logical guess. It says how to eat Alfonso. Ratnagiri is mentioned there. It's a beautiful, gorgeous ad for which entity? We give you last five seconds. Two hundred points if you get this one right. Very, very workable. Given the fact that Ratnagiri is mentioned there. Closing pounds or a closing question on this, Sumanto. You want to tell us anything the, about the sub, ad? Team two has been uh, uh, raising Quiet. their hand for some reason. Yeah, I'm not wrong. Not wrong. Not wrong. Really? Guessing yeah. Maharashtra no, no, tourism. No. Who? Team three guess Maharashtra, Maharashtra tourism. Sumanto, what do you think? Yeah. yeah, that's right. It's Maharashtra tourism. This is an ad that I worked on, and uh, yeah, it it was for. <laughs> Maharashtra tourism, and uh, that that time they had a, a train, a luxury, uh, like a palace on wheels for Maharashtra called the Deccan Odyssey, and yes. uh, one of the places that it went to was Ratnagiri, and we had done interesting ads like this for each of the places it went to. So this one was for Ratnagiri, and it was all about how to eat Alfonso and how you you have to get your hands dirty to really enjoy a mango. 
lovely what an innovative way to sh have a tourism ad uh, and, and someone you and i were discussing about another uh, particular ad just give me a second uh, of a west bengal ad uh, did you have a chance to work on that as well west bengal tourism yes yeah so i also worked on the uh, west, west bengal tourism campaign a few years ago uh, and the the slogan that that i coined is, is still being used which is the sweetest part of india and that was a campaign that uh, had shahrukh khan in it yes so uh, initially when you know when we presented the concept shahrukh khan was not a part of it but uh, um, then mamta banerjee insisted that uh, he has to be a part and and we did we we shot we shot a scene with him and then it was presented to her uh, but she still was not happy with it and we had to do a uh, we had to do a studio shoot in uh, mehboob studios where shahrukh khan was looking into camera and you know telling people visit uh, as been called the sweetest part of india and you know we had to we had to use a green screen and you know the the visuals from Be bengal were added on later on and and that's how the final film appeared but, lovely uh, in fact when i saw that ad uh, those of you who are interested you can check it out uh, it's a wonderful ad with west bengal uh, it's a wonderful long ad with a uh, lady a who's from yeah, a foreigner who's traveling around calcutta but suddenly shahrukh khan appears you know uh, in a pose where he's you not know, dancing with her in a tram in the end last 5 seconds yeah <laughs> all right uh, i think no one got that one right let's move back to the board Okay, I'm going to give a chance to somebody who's not answered yet, right? So we'll go with somebody who's the lowest. Team four, you are currently at the bottom of the leaderboard. So why don't you pick a topic? Branded. Um, brand queens, branded queens. So two hundred. Branded queens for two hundred. This is a very interesting round that we have called branded queens. some really interesting stories check this one out very interesting story again i'm looking for the explanation or the story here barbara proctor is the founder of an agency called proctor and gardner she's the first african american woman to own an advertising agency what is unusual about the name of the agency team 3 no brainer has gone for it she has named the agency on her maiden name she did not go for her uh, husband's name something so okay so she wanted to highlight the feminism something so okay so sorry uh, it was not i can't hear you she, she yeah she named the agency on her maiden name so okay not her That's awkward awesome. name after the marriage and things so okay so which normally people does so okay so she wanted to show the people women that they have their they have their own identity and women empowerment and things so that's the basic, basic story yes um i'm not going to give you negatives i'm not going to give you points as well uh, anybody else would like to improve on that answer cry at me yeah so we think that uh, she named her ad agency after the fsc brand procter and gamble so similar sounding something on that good guess unfortunately not the right answer so minus 100 to you team 5 reservoir underdogs yeah we'll take a guess basically she used her maiden name as well as her married name to show the uh, company's name why to show that she exists on her own other than her husband that is what i'm looking for right so there is no second partner so the name of the nc sounds like there are two partners proctor and gardner gardner is actually her last name or a uh, uh, husband ex husband's name and proctor is her name so she made it sound like there are actually two people that there's a silent male partner as well uh, and she just used her maiden and husband's name so that people would think that she had a male partner 200 points to team 5 who got that one right tisa uh since you also run uh, you know an interesting agency just wanted to know like we were discussing this right there there been multiple instances uh, recently in 2017 there were these two women founders uh, who started this platform called witsy where they created a fictional male partner just so that investors would take them seriously uh, there's a wonderful 90s whoopi goldberg movie called the associate where she again creates a, a fictional male partner called kati named after the brand kati sark uh, right so any thoughts uh, views on these practices 
yeah so uh, i mean uh, thankfully uh, we've come a really long way since then and uh, uh, i mean you know a couple of months ago we lo- i uh, i mean i've launched lady finger which is like an all women outfit and proud to be in proud to announce and shout it from the rooftops yes. and uh, and it's uh, great that uh, marketing teams and clients and young people like you this is it's not a lack of it's not a feminist agency it's just yes. talking about female point of view and uh, thankfully we didn't have to resort to some uh, you know ubiquitous title which is like non gender specific to be able to like uh, have a footing in the industry yes. so yeah uh, we have come a long way but it's uh, but what 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 inspires me in these stories is uh, you know women didn't stop trying so if you can't if you can't beat them like join them and figure navigate yes. your way around which is something we're doing eternally so that's yeah. what i love about these stories and including this whole uh, you know the whole proctor uh, debacle it's fabulous yeah that's yeah. it wonderful yeah even i love these stories uh, i think these need to, needed to be shared uh, and great answers there from team 5 team 1 and team 3 also took some interesting guesses let's take a look at the scores we have with us all right kashyap all right so we have team 3 no brainer that's clearly leading uh, team sail bhilai were in second position for long period of time but now we have team 3 no brainer at 1340 points Team Five Reservoir Underdogs at 320 in second place currently, closely followed by Sail Bilai at 230 points. But again, it's still early days. We're just halfway through the first round. We have Inquisitive at 10, Quizzer Sons bu- uh, uh, buzzers, and Cry at Me still to open the account. But again, like I said, you have a bunch of new questions coming your way. Team Five, you have the control of the board. Yes. Team five. Uh, we'll take ads. अच्छे हैं three hundred. Ads अच्छे हैं for three hundred. This is a video question. Take a look at this ad and tell me the brand. This is an ad for an American brand. You can also spot a familiar face, but just tell me which brand is it. Okay, team three has already pressed the buzzer. Yeah. Before we get to uh, the... Peter England, and this is Sumanto appeared on that ad. We can see Peter England. Yeah. Sumanto has appeared as a model in a Peter England ad, but this is not the Peter England ad. So you get a minus one fifty. I'm going to play the video for everyone else. <laughs> The visuals are important, folks. All right. So that is the familiar face, Sumanto. So Sumanto is a model and an actor. Has ap- appeared in multiple ads. Team four, Quizzer, Sans, Buzzers from Siliguri have gone for it. Um, we'll say Gibson. What is that? The guitar, Gibson guitars. Gibson guitar guitars. Yeah. Is absolutely right. This is the Gibson guitars. This is an ad for Gibson guitars starring Sumanto Chattopadhyay. Uh, Sumanto, any fun facts and trivia about Gibson? Yeah, is it an Indian it, ad? Please. It, no, it was a uh, an American ad, but I mean because the it had sort of an Indian Maharaja kind of a theme. That's why it was shot in Bombay, and it was shot by a really famous international director. Uh, Does anybody here know which director that is? Does anyone want to take a guess? Can I guess? Which uh, Indian? Yes, please. Uh, uh, director of Indian origin, an international director of Derek Indian Tarsen. origin. Yes, Team yeah. Five has gone for it. Uh, yeah, I said Tarsem Singh. Tarsem Singh is a good guess. No, Cry at Me has also pressed the buzzer. Yeah, so which it's Indian? M Night Shyamalan. M Night Shyamalan. These are all. Uh, You know, wish list of Sumanto who he wants to work with. Apart from, <laughs> can I answer? Yes, Tisa, go for it. No, but any any team wants to try as yet before everybody gives up. No, okay. So I'm. Um, it's it's a slight cheat because I I, I mean know the answer, but is it Gurinder Chadda? Yeah, it's Gurinder Chadda. Yeah. 
<laughs> right uh, it is gurinder chadda so this is uh, you know a wonderful ad that i didn't i discovered through sumanto that he was, he started and was directed by gurinder chadda uh, and this is for the american markets right suman it was for the us yes correct yes. right but i still want to touch upon what ravi shankar saha said you have appeared as a model in peter england ads correct i have i have which other brands yeah. have you appeared as a, a model for i've uh, appeared in fair and lovely oh. as the guy guy who's floored by this uh, girl whose picture he's okay okay with then she says she says aane to do and then she it's it's very regressive she she uses fair and lovely and by the time you know i show up i'm like totally floored by her and, and all that so that's that's one of them uh, many uh, actually different ads i've done um uh, wills made for each other i was uh, oh lovely one, one of the models uh, for that um, they used to have a, a a product called wills diary which was a surrogate product and uh, i had appeared with sushma reddy and i think one of the last uh, ads that they did i mean they discontinued it after a while so it was towards the end that i did that yeah and various and other yeah Thanks. lovely it's wonderful to yeah. see uh, somebody who's in behind the camera as well as in front of the camera uh, and tisa didn't want to be left behind uh, in this <laughs> battle with sumanto so she shared these wonderful ads right like where she was also a model long ago uh, tisa can tell us a little bit about it these are in bengali oh. magazine if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah it's it in bengali magazine sumanto sumanto has also been a part of and uh, i promise you guys i was looking through youtube to find the films i've done but unlike shmonto they're not very popular or famous and i could not find them for the brands <laughs> i've done but i will dig them out one day so uh, my mother the interesting fact moms who always keep i, I don't even have these copies I was talking to my mother and she said wait i have some pictures so this is like about 10000 years ago but yeah just because shmonto shared his ad i said i have to share but, something but about but let me share the fact that i tista and i used to work together at ogilvy many years ago and at that time she modeled for a sunlight detergent tv commercial as well oh lovely yeah, yeah and that's yeah. the one which is obliterated from the face of the earth because i could not find it anywhere but thank you yeah thank you you he- heard it here first in the brand blitz quiz yeah. uh, you know old vintage ads of tista and gibson guitars starring sumanto let's go back uh, who answered the last question gibson was it team 4 yes team 4 you have control of the board uh we going for ads acche hain 400 ads acche hain oh. for 400 let's go there okay here's the ad on your screen 11000 texts were sent by people participating in this award winning campaign team 3 has even pressed a buzzer before i read it what were they about what were the text about so the team text it was, yeah it was from you know basically you know there were cryptic clues or rather they people were asked to decipher the story ha you know so images we, within images yeah, so people yeah. were asked to send sms is and decipher guess the what the story and, is and this of the billboards ad so it is placed okay so people will reach and they will it, it's like a clue so once, game, clue game well, 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 well. once they completed you know once they sms and they actually received back the actual answers you know what stories were they going for you know and yeah it was you know uh, billboard ads that's what tell me if you, you want should to have left me. ravi shankar complete the answer instead of interrupting right. but both of you were completely right right points to you this is absolutely right right everybody who watched these billboards had to interpret what they took out of these ads because you have an image with an image with an image uh, and this was the billboard that made india argue right so 400 points to team 3 who's running away with the first place in today's quiz sumanto uh, any fun facts Well, I mean, I would like to ask: Does anybody can anybody interpret this? What 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 was the story the, that the visual that's on screen right now, for example? What what was it trying to say? Be- it was it's basically all of these featured a chain of events, like something leading to something leading to something else. So there were there were always these three pictures, one within another. Another. So first one, so one to what I can understand, the shark fin soup for for quite popular in China. So must be that you uh, like that. Sorry, the shark fin soup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. 
Yeah. So, like Sai said, that's a really interesting uh, theory, but it's not correct. So, the the answer to this one is that uh, the industrial. Sorry, I just have to interrupt you, Sumanth. Team four wants to take a shot at it. Oh, so well. sorry, so sorry. Please Team go four, ahead. go for it. No, we have we had the similar we had a similar guess that yeah. you know the industries killed the fish and the nearby infra, uh, ecosystem, and now they are being served in a plate or the, food the, the uh, food yeah food. real soup. That was the guess that yeah, we that's correct. That 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 is correct. I mean that's uh, true. What so to, the full answer is that uh, because of the industrial uh, revolution in Japan, there was a huge expansion in the uh, workforce, and therefore many more mouths to feed. And so, therefore, there was a food shortage, and then there was an indiscriminate killing of whales because whale meat is one of the things that the Japanese eat. But they were at that time indiscriminately killing them because there was not enough of normal food to go around. So, so yes, not whale, whale soup maybe as well, but yeah, basically whale meat. Lovely. Ten points to team four. Uh, with that fun fact, you're tied. in the third position with team 6 sale bilai team 5 reservoir dogs is currently in second place at 320 points so that's the battle for the second place between these three teams but there's no doubt that team 3 is running away with this to today's quiz with almost 1600 points which is what i think the south zone final winner had by the end of the quiz right let's move on uh, team 3 you have control of the board Uh, branded queens. Wow, uh, brand, branded queens, four hundred. Branded queens of four hundred. On your screen now. In order to fight gender inequality, the famous advertising legend Cindy Gallup from BBH launched a chatbot called Ask Cindy Gallup that would help women in advertising do what better. So, what did this chatbot help? women in advertising do so she is a legendary figure she's done a lot of interesting campaigns but she's also done something outside of her work as well she's done multiple interesting things so this chatbot ask cindy gallop would help women professionals in the advertising industry to do what better something they they struggle with to some extent in the corporate world team 5 reservoir underdogs have gone for it uh we could basically Uh, like asking for equal pay as the uh, as the other men in the are basically asking equal, pay, equal the, pay yeah sorry go on asking for equal pay to their male counterparts because of the gender pay gap because there's a pay gap they're asking for a raise so that they would be paid equally is absolutely correct 400 points to you Right, so this is a very interesting initiative by Cindy Gallup, where she actually created a chatbot that would help women negotiate a raise or a pay a hike. So, uh, Tisa, you've spoken about Cindy and what an inspiration she is. A remarkable figure. Uh, any favorite uh, stories or fun facts about her? So, um, uh, uh, you you know, Cindy runs her uh, you know her uh, website called Make Love Not Porn, where she is basically trying to yeah. you know bust these. Uh, you know uh, myths and this whole uh, you know sex being a taboo and what it's all about and really uh, and through through that really uh, you know liberating and really make, making women uh, you know come to terms with their bodies and come to really terms with uh, where i would say pleasure uh, on the advertising front she's like an absolute legend she's worked on like uh, camp like tremendous campaigns and done so much so much you know really um, i would say activism for women in the industry and really given them a, a Place in the sun. She's, uh, you know, available whenever you need any help for anything. She's very big on women and startups. Uh, she comes to India. She loves India and Shahrukh Khan. Oh. And uh, yeah. she, um, she's yeah, yeah. She's been here. I think, I think the Triple A invited her for, uh, you know, one of their sessions to come and talk, uh, come and talk to the industry. And uh, she lives in uh, New York. She's fascinating. Uh, she keeps talking about blowing shit up. She doesn't mince her words. And. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah so she's pretty much like every woman's role model not just because she's uh, you know calls it out but because she really talks about issues which are so relevant i mean who would do a chatbot that allow you know that facilitated women to ask for a, on how to ask for a raise i mean that's like yes. fantastic that's the kind of stuff she does so yeah that's cindy gallop lovely yeah. I, uh, and i must be a feminist because i also follow her on linkedin 
So t- today she's done a post about uh, this Coco Golf who's just won the the US Open tennis. Yeah. So and uh, uh, and the by the way connected to touch the pickle Cindy yeah. was the uh, she was the uh, the jury chair of that glass inaugural glass line. So out of all the women she was she got the idea and she was like you know the the chairman is not supposed to cast their vote till the end so she allowed everybody to talk but she was really rooting for something that was cultural and radical and unique so yeah she's a big fan of touch the pickle as well i mean that's all connected with part mm, of today's quiz thank you thank you sumanto and tisa for these great fun facts uh, for those of you who are interested do check out cindy gallup's wonderful ted talk on this campaign she's been running for many years called make love not pawn uh, for those who are also quizzers there's a very interesting fun fact that she has a super black apartment in new york that she lives out of it's actually become a place that a lot of music videos are shot right so notorious big and a lot of these great artists actually go to her apartment and shoot ads in her house so that's an interesting trivia there okay um, i think team 5 you have the board still four questions left quickly guys do you want uh, to take a bigger risk go for four. viral influenza oh. 400 dot let's do viral influenza okay here's the question on your screen now Jeremy's Chocolates is a conservative anti-woke right-wing company that has launched two chocolates called She Her He Him. What is the difference? What is the difference between these two chocolate bars? One is called She Her, the other is called He Him. You can work this one out. It's very logical. It's an anti-woke company. Team 2 Inquisitive has gone for it. You can work this one out, folks. So just taking a guess. uh he him has nuts in it and she her is plain chocolate that's all it's absolutely uh, correct yeah, right so he him has nuts in it and she her does not have nuts in it and the person who runs english nut is proudly clapping at the dance <laughs> <laughs> yeah Yeah. All right. Uh, so this is a very interesting uh, person. I don't know what to say, folks. Right. So uh, it all started. L- let me show you the ad, and you can figure it out for yourself. International Women's Day is upon us again, and I love an international woman. But our friends over at Hershey's, they don't even know what a woman is. They've hired a biological male to be the spokesperson for their Women's Day campaign, and they're calling that campaign. And I swear, I'm not making this up. Her, she. Hershey. It's humiliating. And it's the reason that I'm launching Jeremy's chocolate. We have two kinds. She her and he him. One of them's got nuts. If you need me to tell you All right, so uh what happened is that on Women's Day Hershey's launched a chocolate called Her She to in retaliation this right winger podcaster millionaire launched a chocolate called she he him and she her so this is how the right wing is fighting the gen z woke gen z in the united states by launching chocolates which i think is very sweet right uh, so yeah if you want to read more just check out uh, jeremy boring who also has launched razors for real men and all of that right so quickly moving back i think team 2 you have the board after long time pick your topic you have 100 for ads acche hain 100 for viral influenza and 100 for branded queens Viral 100. Which one? Viral. Okay. Viral 100. Viral. Got it. Got it. Got it. Here's viral for 100 points on your screen now. In this ad campaign, Vara Studios designed the traditional Bangladeshi sarees tagli with one change. What is the one change? Team three, no brainer. Just to press the buzzer before team five yeah. has team three. Uh, so what what yeah so basically uh, the bangladesh the women has no names so that they they are not never called by their names, names right? but someone's daughter someone's wife or oh, mom mother so basically the, these sharis okay they have written their names so that they people call them by the names so that you know reinforce somebody to reinforce idea yeah. of them being called by their names and not any other identity yeah. 100 points to you 
for all that effort. This is absolutely right. So what they did is because a lot of women in Bangladesh are referred to by their father as their daughter or their husband as their wife, they printed the names of the different women on these saris. Tisa, do you know anything about this campaign? Yeah, so well done, Nobrina. Uh, it's a campaign that's very close to my heart. I worked on this uh, idea for like a year. And uh, they're not printed. They, they're actually woven. So uh, each sari takes about uh, two months to finish. Uh, I mean, the actual name takes about a month and a half. So each sari had the names uh, woven onto them. And uh, uh, this, is an, uh, this was an idea for Bangladesh because obviously the insight was relevant there. And uh, the interesting fun bit is it was done for a completely different brand. It was done by, for a, 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 well, a leading detergent brand, which was also in Bangladesh. And then due to some uh, geopolitical issues, uh, <laughs> we couldn't continue with them. And I had to scramble and find a brand. And Vara, which is a clothing brand, steps in, stepped in. Uh, and I'm really proud of them and this campaign because it's not just about, um, you know, an idea. It's really uh, dignify, giving women back their name and that's their dignity. And also, you know, on uh, uh, something which she wears. So it's something that people can see. So this is really, uh, it was called the Nameless Women. And uh, I have a, and as one of the, one of the perks of working on this campaign is I got a sari with my name uh, woven on it, which is with me oh, somewhere. Lovely. Yeah. We didn't know this. We would ask you to like show us. I know. Like, because a lot of people after have asked me, but it's like, it was, so because we work with the weavers, they're on the border of uh, uh, West Bengal and Bangladesh in a tiny village. And for like over a year, he managed to do like, what, 15, 20, and then it went on to 100 salaries. But we work with them. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you so much, Tisa, for those great stories. Uh, There's a fabulous campaign. For those of you interested, do check it out. Uh, we'll show you a short glimpse here. Gautu kai lup silam. Shakibir Biti Kolazani Ar Kail Thika Hoibu Ziaulir Bibi <laughs> Munni's daughter Iqbal's wife Farooq's sister In parts of Bangladesh women face a unique problem As their life goes by they lose something that is dear to them Their name their sense of self The traditional Tangail Sari is proudly worn by the women of Bangladesh <laughs> But what if the sari could have the owner's name woven within? Ami Humaiza. Ami Apia. Ami Shifa. Ami Joya. Ami Abbasane Soto Kukinoi. Ami Safiya. A movement that empowers women one name at a time. I'm getting goosebumps just watching it again. Uh, wonderful campaign, Tista. Shout out to you. Uh, for those of you who are watching it live on stream, you can guess which detergent brand that Tista was talking about, which is supposed to be behind this, <laughs> right? Before the geopolitical issues took over. Okay, um, team three, you have the board. Last two questions on this round. Are you speaking Bengali to me? Oh, we said branded queen. Oh, you said branded queen. Sorry, my bad. Here's the question on your screen now. What first in the world of advertising was accomplished in 1880 when Matilda C. Vale founded the MC Vale Agency in New York? I've given a clue. <laughs> if you had paid attention to the previous question, Team Six, Sale Bila has gone for it. Unmute yourself, folks. Sorry, we pressed accidentally. Oh, you pressed accidentally. It's okay. Now you have to take a guess. It's on YouTube live. See, when in doubt, no, just say Modi. It usually turns out to be right. Um, <laughs> that's what I guess I suggest to people. Take a guess. Quickly, folks. Team 4 is also pressed the buzz. First, first ad with a photograph coming out. First ad with a photograph is a nice guess. Team 4. Uh, first ad agency headed by a woman. I'll give it to you, right? We are close to the end of the quiz, so I want to go rush through. This is the first all-women founded advertising agency. This happened way back in 1880. In fact, I think it's three years before even JWT was formed. Uh, Tista, and this the reason why I gave Tista as a clue is, of course, Tista, you want to explain? No. Okay, cool. It's because she's also founded an agency which is for women run by all uh, an all women team yeah, called Lady I'm, marveling, I'm marveling at this. Uh, I'm marveling at this done even before Wonderman Thompson. So how you know 
it's full circle so guys yeah, yeah. i have an already been agency it's called lady finger i've also been uh, the sachi and chosen the tiger but not mm-hmm. because i saw it in the zoo but because i just believe it's powerful <laughs> and uh, there's a there's a woman riding it for all the different reasons it's just it's not meant to be just radical it's meant to be funky but really more importantly it's uh, it, it it's about brand talk brands talking to women in the way they sh- should be spoken to and that's yes. what we're attempting to do at lady finger lovely uh, can we have a shout out for tista sen and the lady finger team in on the youtube chat please okay let's move on to and of course i think tista you were sharing some very really interesting uh, agencies called via rose and own it which is also what two other agencies which are run only by women yeah and uh, they're all uh, and the, the the interesting thing is but they're all mostly you know business led and then with the creative partner but lady finger is well creative led in that sense and uh, looking for people who will partner us so we have we're very small uh, we're a very lean team but we have a panel of amazing women and we've already started doing some well amazing interesting work so and thank you sai for the shout this has been one wonderful i mean i'm very glad i'm on this quiz that was super thank of you, you. thank you it's an honor to have you here uh, and you also mentioned this very interesting agency called majority which is made up only of people of color so there are no people yeah so they know yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know uh, in, in, in you know it's in the us so you you can do so much and you can uh, you can say so much unlike a lot of things you can can't and can do here but yeah lovely okay let's go to the last question of this round which is ads hache hain which again we'll open it up on buzzer to all the teams oops okay this is a question contributed by sumanto it's one of his favorite ads take a look and just tell me the brand here we go holiday season ads by which brand for 100 points you can work this one out Wow, nobody is going for this. I thought this was fairly easy. Like, yeah, team three, no brainer has gone for it. We'll say JB's, JB whiskey, JB whiskey. So jingle for J and B. I'm guessing. JB is absolutely right, right? Uh, mm-hmm. I heard Rabi say Jim Beam somewhere in the middle after that, which is a different whiskey, but that's not the right answer. You said JB whiskey, uh, that's absolutely right. Yeah. So you could see J and B missing from Jingle Bells and it's a wonderful uh, Christmas ad campaign by an alcohol brand. So Manto. uh you said you love no, no, so it well, so the correct way to say it is j and b j and that's b yes the, that's the actual name and uh, i mean i love word play which is why i started the english nut but this is a very old ad and i just loved the cleverness of it and you know in advertising clients are always asking us you know, when we present an idea to them but you know another brand can do this idea well this is a case where no yes. other brand can do no it because brand. only j and b that can right ingle els ingle els and, and it's so beautifully really art directed yeah yeah the yeah, art is brilliant okay uh, we have a bunch of people on youtube chat uh, kapinjal choudhry anha fatma but naturally uh, lucky but uh, faridur rahman choudhry you all guessed uh, jb or jnb that's absolutely right so with that we are at the end of round 1 folks uh, well done all of you uh, we are running 5 minutes late but uh, congratulations to all of you kashyap if you're ready with the scores we can take a look at it let me know okay we're ready with the scores let's take a look at the scores all right so it's a no brainer that no brainer is leading but let's see how the other teams are doing all right so in s- second place is reservoir underdogs the team from im calcutta at 720 points a fun fact for all of you who are watching reservoir underdogs actually topped the national prelims right they were the number one team all across the country uh, right uh, and they are currently in second place followed closely by team 2 inquisitive with a last minute rush team 4 queen quizzer sons buzzers have actually tried out a lot of interesting questions they just got a couple of negatives sale bilai can still sort of b in second place with the last round and of course say same goes for cry at me who's at minus 200 okay let's move quickly to the second round oops yeah thank you kashyap
all right okay so we looked, we looked at the scores this is round 2 the final round which is four clue ka one what you're going to have is four clues coming up one by one you'll get differential points depending on when you buzz and answer you can press on the buzzer only once at every clue but you can press it at every single clue as well here's the first question on your screens buzzers are reset here we go the first clue is godrej nature's basket all right moving on to second clue for 300 points two yum chips with virat kohli on the pack with 300 points you can really change the leaderboard right now okay let's move on to the third clue okay team 3 no brainer has pressed the buzzer just ahead of team 4 Sanjeev, this is R P Sanjeev Goenka or R P Sanjeev Goenka group because basically they owns the fast food brand and eighty kilo bagan. Yeah, used to, I think. yeah. Uh -huh. they used to. Then no, they have been sold out. Okay, yeah. They now owns okay and eighty kilo bagan he is associated with he has stakes. So basically Sanjeev Goenka or R P Sanjeev Goenka group. Is absolutely correct. This is the R P Sanjeev Goenka yeah. group which owns all these four brands: Nature's Baskets. Two Yam, Mohan Bagan, they have a stake in, and of course, Sare Gama, right? So plus two hundred to team three, no brainer. Who's running away with the quiz? But the rest of you, you can still make this happen, right? There are four hundred points, three hundred points up at stake. Let's move quickly to the next question on your screen. Coming up, buzzers are reset. The first clue is Warner Brothers Pictures. Okay, let's move on to the second clue. Nestle Nesquik. This is from the context of branding and design. Okay, let's go to the next one. Is Lijit Papad? Okay, Team Four, Kuzar Sans, Buzzers have gone for it. So a rabbit as the brand ambassador, so Nesquik, Warner Brothers, Bugs Bunny, and Lijit. Uh, Lijit as a rabbit. Yeah, rabbit can rabbit. Which other brand do you think has rabbit as a? Duracell. Duracell. Is absolutely correct, right? So this, these are all brands that have rabbits as mascots or bunnies as mascots. So Warner Brothers for the longest time, Bugs Bunny was the official mascot. Nesquik is one of those brands from Nestle which has a rabbit as a mascot. Lijit Papad has this terrifying. <laughs> rabbit as their mascot if for those of you who grew up in the 80s and 90s you'll have nightmares uh, looking at this lizard papad bunny and of course right it's also the mascot for duracell and energizer so points to quizzer sans buzzer for that with that how have you your scores have moved up you're at 530 still in third place just behind by 190 points behind reservoir underdogs which is team 5 in fourth position is team 2 inquisitive at 410 points so any of these teams can come in second place as well as team 6 sail bilai and cry at me all the best folks here we go to the next question on your screen now the first clue has two parts indigo and vistara and my comment here is that there's no such practice i'll move to the next one virgin atlantic Names of iconic women. Team four. Quizzer sons. Buzzers again. Press the buzzer. Uh -huh. Open it. Uh, they name their planes that way. So Spice Jet has named their planes in the name of the spices, oregano, and other stuff. So that is what I'm guessing. The... That's a big risk. Quizzer sons. Uh, buzzer. You would have unless. I mean, you would have definitely come in second place uh, with this question if you gotten it right. But minus one fifty is not what you will get. because you're absolutely right this this is the tradition of naming aircrafts by different airlines indigo and virgin uh, vistara don't have any such naming practices virgin atlantic names all their aircrafts after iconic historic women from especially from the 20th century air india has been naming their aircrafts after indian emperors right so indian uh, air india has 
always been naming it Emperor Ashoka, Emperor Shah Jahan, Emperor Akbar. Then 1975, Janata Party came to power and they ordered them saying you cannot use English names like Emperor. You have to refer to them as Hindi names or drop the names. So Krishna Devaraya, Samudra Gupta, these are the first aircraft without Emperor behind them. Virgin Atlantic has the uh, this practice where they've named aircrafts like Diana after Princess Diana, Lady Emmeline after Emmeline of the Suffragette Movement. Fearless Lady is a very cute story. It's named after Richard Branson's mother. Uh, Queen of the Skies is named after Queen Elizabeth and Billy Holiday and so on and so forth. And Spice Jet is named his all its aircrafts after different spices. So it's coriander, chili, turmeric or halti, red chili, mustard, pepper and hing. Right. So points to all of you. Uh, before we move on to the last question, a big, big shout out uh, and thanks to our sponsors, Cadbury's Dairy Milk and Ajo, which is our style partner. Of course, Storyboard 18, everyone at the team, Delshad and Priyanka for helping us put to this together. And of course, the wonderful team at India wants to know who've been behind the content and the operations behind this quiz. And of course, what can I say about Tista and Sumanto? You guys have been wonderful. Uh, it's honestly a fanboy moment for me to have you on the quiz, but some great stories and fun facts. Uh, great to have you on this quiz show. Any favorite facts or stories from today's quiz that you liked, Sumanto or Tista? Your favorite questions? Hmm. Okay, we'll come to you after the last question. You can yeah. think about it till then. Uh, we'll look at the scores one last time. Uh, Kashyap, if you're ready with that, so that the teams know whether to, when to press the buzzer and so on. Can I go ahead? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the scores. This is how the teams have been performing throughout the quiz. As you can see, the leaderboard has been constantly changing apart from the number one position. And right now, we have Quizzers Sans Buzzer from Siliguri. That's a quiz young quizzing company from Siliguri that's in second place, poised to qualify for the national finals. But team five, that's Reservoir Underdogs from IM Calcutta and Inquisitive from XLRA Jamshedpur. Two young college teams could also change their fortunes at 720 and 410. And of course, uh, wonderful answers from Sale Bilai and Cry At Me so far. Okay, let's go back to the main quiz. Here's the last question of today's quiz on your screen now. The first clue is My Muse. I'm going to wait a little bit longer just to tempt the teams. Okay, no one is falling for my bait. Oh, wait, there is someone who's fallen for the bait. Team two, go for it. You need to unmute yourself. Self pleasuring. Uh, we are unmuted. Hello? Yes. Are we audible? Yes. Self pleasuring uh, tools or companies. I'll assume you mean meant sexual wellness products. That Hello. is not the right answer. So minus two hundred to you. Yes, yeah, sexual right? wellness not products. Just, yes, got it. Not the right answer. We'll move on quickly to the next clue. Moby Quick is the second clue. So your first clue is My Muse, which is a sexual wellness brand. The second clue is Moby Quick. Okay, let's move on to the third clue. That is Chumbak's logo. Oh, Cry at Me has gone for it again. Yes. Minus uh, one. Yes, so we are thinking it's the founder of this Moby Quick, like Dipan Preet Singh. He has stakes in all of these companies. Got it. So you're saying one person has taken all these companies. You will get yeah. a minus 100. That is not the right answer. Three seconds more for anybody else to press the buzzer. What is common to my... Oh, sorry. Team 5 as the underdogs has gone for it. Yes. Uh, I'll just guess. These have investments by Bollywood actors. Investments by Bollywood actors is a good guess. That's not the right answer. Team 3. These are the companies founded by husband and wife teams. Can you explain? Yeah, uh, uh, couple's husband and Chumbok is Shubra Chadda and some, some provoker. Okay. Movie quick, uh, uh, I, I can't recall. Okay. okay. And name uh, one more that would fit in right. as a fourth clue. Uh, fourth clue would be uh, Mama Earth. 
Mama Earth or Sugar Cosmetics, which are both right. It's absolutely right. These are all Indian brands founded by couples or a husband and wife pair, right? My Muse is a sexual wellness platform that is founded by Anushka and Sahil Gupta. Moby Quick was founded by Upasana Taku and Bipin Preet Singh. Chumbak was founded by Shubhra Chadda and Vivek Prabhakar. And of course, as we all know. Mama Earth and Sugar Cosmetics are both founded by couples, right? Points to no-brainer. It's only apt that the team that has stolen this quiz, away from everyone else, answers the last question of today's quiz. That's Raktim and Ravi Sankar Saha. That's all for today, folks. Hope you had a wonderful quiz. Hope you enjoyed the questions. Um, just, just want to mute you, Team Three. Yes, right. So the runner-up for today's quiz. Uh, before that, a big, big shout out to all the six teams. I think they took some great risks, uh, gave some fantastic fun facts and answers. Congratulations to all of you. So finishing sixth today is Cry at Me, who took a lot of chances. Their score doesn't really reflect the kind of guesses that they took. But Cry at Me is a young team from XLR Jamshedpur. Congratulations to them. The next team we had was Team Six Sail Blai again, who gave some fantastic guesses and fun facts. Congratulations to you. In fourth position, we had team two, that's inquisitive, with 210 points, some great answers that nobody else cracked. In third position, unfortunately, is the team from IM Calcutta, who topped the national prelims, folks, don't forget that. Uh, Reservoir Underdogs, some great answers, but unfortunately, f falling short at the last question. But runners up and winning uh, or Winning a position in the national finale is a very young team from Siliguri, the team from the company Quizora, Queen's Quizzer San Buzzer, with 830 points. Can you unmute yourself, folks? How does it feel to qualify for the national finals at the last moment? Um, yeah, it's that sort of a feeling, right? When you win the quiz right at the uh, last spot. And um, as we mentioned, it's ironic that we have this name and we managed to win it or at least get a runners up position in a buzzer Brilliant. quiz. So great. And we're happy to be representing our town for the national finals. Wonderful to see Siliguri uh, on the national finals. Just a second. All right. Uh, so that's a big, big shout out to uh, Sagar and Shubham from Siliguri. And winning the quiz today is with no, it's a no brainer. Uh, Raktim and Rabi Sankar Saha, who run away with the quiz, with some great answers, some high risk taking. It's not easy uh, in a quiz like this to come up with answers every single time and hit the buzzers. Folks, congratulations. Well done. What are your favorite questions from today's quiz? The, Francis, the Francis Gerity. The Francis Gerrit, the question that we opened with, which was actually contributed by Tista. Congratulations. We'll see you at the national finals. Tista and Sumanto, thanks so much for having uh, being on the show. Would love to know your favorite moments from today's quiz. So, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. And I was just amazed that, you know, I thought some of the questions were really difficult. And, you know, people just got it. Press the buzzer, like even before you finish the question. Yes. So that was really interesting. Something that I found interesting was from a perspective of, uh, you know, in advertising, advertising uh, awards abroad at Cannes and elsewhere are so important. And Tista highlighted something very important there that, you know, something like touch the pickle. It's such a uh, Indian cultural insight. It's something yes. that's so big over here, but it is not understood in the Western world. So, you know, it, it's so important for juries in all these places to have representation from every part of the world so that I think that advertising can be judged uh, fairly uh, from different cultures and different parts of the world. Lovely. Thank you, Sumanto, for that. Uh, Tista, your favorite moment from the quiz? God, uh, so I have lost uh, a couple of heartbeats. I think uh, I think the adrenaline for the guys who were taking part for me was like, uh, uh, I mean, it was just like sky high. I didn't think I'd get so involved. It was completely like living in the moment. That's the first part. So guys, all of you all really, really well done. I'm just like, I'm just so impressed because it's just, I mean, I mean, 
it's just it's just outstanding the kind of yes. uh, i know you're all quizzers but that's great the other thing sai is really to you and storyboard because uh, you know there's been such a thing about advertising and uh, you know clients and it's almost becoming like the big bad world right now yes. and i said it to you yesterday but you made it like fun again i forgotten this is a uh, you know we're proud of this industry this is the kind of stuff we have it's like going back in time and you know learning about whether it's founders or logos or the stories behind it and you know everything that you and shumanto shared or the fun facts these guys contributed to just makes uh, i mean it 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 reminds me again about why we are in this industry so yeah thank you all of you thank all of you, you tista thank you for saying that because honestly the reason why we're doing this is really to celebrate the creativity in indian advertising over the decades right it's not just like last few years or even before that it's throughout i i think there's so many stories that people need to know about uh, and there's very little that people know about the brands and what the work that goes behind like your bowler hat story today is such an important story i feel for cherry blossom right just finding the right bowler hat and you know uh, a bowler hat rather uh, for the ad to be made uh, not too many people talk about these stories right so that's the uh, goal that we started with and i think today we really did that really well thank you so much folks for being on the quiz show uh, and all the best to both of you and to the teams we'll see you at the national finals on september 24th with mr piyush pandey himself this is me signing off see you next week